Hey everybody, my name is uh, Justin Hunter. I'm the founder of Graphite and uh, I'm here with Nick. I'll let Nick introduce himself. Hi everybody, I'm Nick Tiley. I'm the founder of BlockySign. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a document in Graphite that acts as a contract. We're going to move that document into Graphite Vault for storage and then we're going to sign that document using BlockySign. And this signature process is going to involve both myself and Nick and is gonna be ultimately verifiable on the Bitcoin blockchain. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And when I do this, you should see the Graphite documents. Now I already have a sample contract here. <clears throat> this is a DJ service contract. We're gonna go ahead and open this up. And you can see here that Nick is gonna be my DJ. Let's add, let me see a typo here. So we can edit this contract, right? This is just a document that's in Graphite. I can do any sort of editing I want. In fact, I want to move the signature fields over to the right-hand side. And I wanna give some actual space to sign. So we'll just do this. We'll add that line there, make it uh, get pretty close. Doesn't have to be perfect for the sake of this demo. <clears throat> and once we're done with that, We'll let the video catch up and I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a PDF. So we'll just hit print here. And I'm gonna change that to save as PDF. We've got the DJ services contract. You can see three page PDF is what we're gonna ultimately end up with here. So we'll save that as uh, DJ contract. And now that that's uh, saved, I'm gonna go back to Graphite Vault. Now the difference obviously between a PDF and a Graphite document is the PDF's not editable. It is something that we can sign, which is what you're gonna see, but I'm gonna move this over to Vault because Vault is gonna be my storage place for things that I'm not editing, things that are, are pretty close to permanent. So I hit add, I'm gonna go and grab that file, DJ contract. And in just a second, that'll pop up here. So we've got the contract. I can open that up. You can see it's a three page document, signature lines, great. Now we're gonna move this over to BlockuSign. So with this sign with BlockuSign button, this is gonna take me over to my BlockuSign account. So I've used BlockuSign before, I've signed in with the same uh, user account, and now I have been moved over to BlockuSign and that document is actually ready for signing. So if I click next, you can see the document is right here. We can scroll through it, but now it's actually ready for signing. So the cool thing with BlockuSign is that you can actually customize your signature right here. You can change the color, you can add emojis. All of these annotations can be dropped onto your document uh, however you want. So I'm gonna change my signature to actually say Justin Hunter. We're gonna change the color to black. We're going to change this font size because that feels a little bit too big. That might end up being too small, so we'll go 16. And I'm going to put uh, the place where I would like Nick to sign, and I'm going to put my signature on there. Okay, so I am the customer. Nick is the DJ. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. I would like Nick to sign right here. And we can go ahead and uh, change the signature line now to a date. So I can actually drop this date field on there uh, instead of my signature, which is pretty cool. Uh, today is the 8th. And instead of this, we're going to change it to a more standard font. And I expect Nick to, to sign this today, so we're going to drop his date in there as well. So this is pretty cool. This shows you the power of the annotations with BlockuSign. It doesn't just have to be signatures that you're uh, dropping on the document. But uh, now that I have that all in there, I've got the place marked where Nick is going to sign. I'm going to save this and I'm going to move on to the next step, which is the send step. So I've got a couple of options here. I can grab this link and just send it to Nick, you know, in a Slack message or a text message or, or however I want to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and email it. So I'm going to send it to nick at graphitedocs.com. And as soon as that processes, we'll get confirmation that the email was sent. And what I think we'll do here is we will pause and have Nick pull up his email, pull up the document, he'll show you his screen, and you're going to see things from his side of, of uh, 
of the process and then we'll kick it back over here. So I'm going to stop sharing on my screen. All right. Thanks, Justin. So yeah, you can see here in my email, I've received uh, the document here to sign. So let's just click on the DJ contract. Um, and it'll take me to the e-signature section in block you sign. Um, if I scroll down, I should see Justin's signature on there. So there's Justin's signature and there's my annotation of where to sign. Um, and if you scroll over here to this log right here, this is actually um, a log of every event that's happened on this document. So there's some automated stuff like creating the document, updating the annotation, but you can actually add some text there too. So I can say, uh, thanks Justin, Justin. And then I could put an emoji on there if I want to. So let's go with that. thumbs up. Um, and all of this information will be saved with the digital signature that you add to this, um, this, this chat log down here. So let me add my signature. Let's unbold it. I want to be green. Now let's do red, just for fun. Drag that there. Um, and at this point, I've signed it, so I need to notify Justin that I've signed it and we're ready to go ahead with the deal. Um, so let me send an email to him. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Justin to basically complete the review. All right. Thanks, Nick. Uh, so you can see that Nick sent that back over to me. I've got the email here and I can click on this link just like he did and pull this up in my BlockuSign account in my storage, totally encrypted. This is the thing that we want to make clear is from Graphite when you're creating the document to Graphite Vault when you're storing the initial PDF over to BlockuSign, all of this is stored in your storage bucket encrypted with your keys. Graphite doesn't have access to it. BlockuSign doesn't have access to it. You own the file, you own the encryption. So you can see here the, the document hash that just represents this actual document that we've uh, signed together. You can look at the contract and see once we get to the bottom, there we go. We've got Nick's signature there. We've got my signature, we've got the date. And the final step really is confirming this, saving this digital signature to the blockchain, which means that it's permanent, it's verifiable by anybody that would like to look this up. Uh, so if in the future you need somebody else to verify that this document was signed by Justin and by Nick, they can do so on the uh, Bitcoin blockchain. So I'm going to yeah, go ahead so and essentially the Bitcoin blockchain acts as, you know, what would be traditionally a notary. So it's, you can kind of think of it as a digital notary service kind of for that verification. It does all the cryptography and all that verification actually stores that in a Bitcoin transaction forever. And here's where you'll be able to track the status of the uh, signing. And it's going to take a little bit of time for it to actually propagate to the Bitcoin blockchain, but you can always track that status when you come back to this page. And, and once you've reached the point where it is actually stamped to the blockchain, you'll have that information in the status tracking page, which we should be able to show you here uh, in just a little bit. Uh, so I am going to now sign to the blockchain. And we'll send this again to Nick at graphitedocs.com. And there we go. So he's going to get a notification now of this uh, step in the process. And there you go. You've got the cat, the Pop-Tart cat. <laughs> yeah, so in production, it's in beta right now. So in production, it should take about 10 minutes to get signed to the blockchain. Um, and we actually do it in batches using the uh, Blockstack subdomains protocol. Um, so we're not actually ever, you know, if we have a million users using BlockuSign in the future, it's not going to bog down the Bitcoin network. It's actually going to efficiently be batched kind of on a layer two network. You know? Yeah, this is great. And uh, I think we will be able to uh, show you the the actual transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, and we'll have Nick do that. All right, so you can see in my email here, I've got a email from Justin to actually review this. So please review and verify the document on the blockchain. Um, and this is a part where both the parties have to make sure that hash matches. So that's really just a kind of a fingerprint of that document, the annotations in that chat thread. Um, so that does match. I remember it started with ZQ. So let me kick this and it'll kick off a workflow for me to sign to the document or uh, sign to the blockchain as well. Um, 
So if I show the digital signature, let me just make sure, yep, the hash matches. Um, and this is my unique signature. So you notice if from a previous video, Justin's signature was slightly different because it was signed with his private key. This one's signed with my private key. So this proves that I was the one who signed this. Um, and this, this is just my address that represents um, essentially my block stack ID here. Um, so let me sign to the blockchain. Say next, and I don't need to email Justin because he already signed it. And yes, I want you signed to the blockchain. All right, save into the blockchain right now. All right, so after several minutes go by, we can actually refresh the page here and we can see that the status is saving to the blockchain. And I kind of want to go through the status here because there's a few steps to actually have it persist. Um, and the first one is you propagate um, to the subdomains registrar and that's really the block stack protocol um, that actually batches this stuff and saves it efficiently to Bitcoin without clogging up the network. So if I click on this status link right here, Maybe. Yeah, so if I click this step link right here, I can see that my subdomain was registered in this transaction. So this is actually a Bitcoin transaction that we can look at. Um, and if, you, if I go into a little more detail right here, this right here is actually the, uh, the unique, unique identifier of the file, which we can reference everything by. Um, so let me go back here and step two, it completed. Um, it's in the process of actually anchoring the hash to Bitcoin. So let's actually take a look at a Bitcoin transaction. Um, and it should propagate within uh, six network confirmations is what it's set to. Um, so this actually takes me to a blockchain explorer for Bitcoin. And you can see it's an unconfirmed transaction right now. The second that it hits six, it'll actually propagate. Um, so let's go down here. Um, and if I go to this output scripts here, um, this is actually the op return code. So you can actually store little bits of data to Bitcoin, about 80 bytes. Um, and this end portion here is actually represents a hash of our data. Um, and I have a technical write-up on, on GitHub that I can link in the video on if you actually want to go through some of the technical proofs on how, how all this works. All right. So it looks like the Bitcoin transaction has confirmed with 18 confirmations. Um, that's more than six that it takes to propagate to the network. So at this point, we're going to jump back to BlockuSign. I'm going to click the DJ contract and I'm going to verify. So if I open up the status menu, you can see 404 steps is completed. Um, we made it, you know, here's step number two, which is the Bitcoin transaction. Step number three here is actually a zone file, which contains all the data. Um, step four is actually the code verify the signatures for you, but you should trust but verify. Um, so I'm actually going to verify that I signed this document. Um, you can see both Justin and my IDs have the same hash. Therefore, it means we signed the same document. Um, and if you want more technical detail on how this all works, there's a link down here below. So let me click on my picture here, and you can see my digital signature here. Um, and this is actually going to take you to the Blockstack zone file. This is stored on layer two, and you can verify this hash on Bitcoin if you want to. There's lots of instructions on how to do that online. Um, so how do you actually know this is associated to me? We can actually pull this profile here. And if we scroll down, you can actually see that this is me, Nick Siley. Um, and how do we actually associate this to kind of some real world attestation? You can actually scroll down to this claim right here. Um, and it's a Facebook claim right here. So if I actually click on this proof URL, it'll open up Facebook here. And you can see this is actually a public post I put on Facebook. So I have a public attestation that I actually signed this. So if I jump back over to the zone file, we can actually verify the digital signature. Um, so the other pieces of important data are the document hash right here, the digital signature, and the owner, which is me who signed it. Um, so I'm gonna actually use the uh, Bitcore node package here to verify a signature. Um, this is just a node package you can download. Um, and I've got VS Code here with it fired up. Um, so let's copy some of that information from my zone file and do the verification. Um, the first thing we need is the address of the signer. So this is my 
public key right here that represents me. Paste that in there. Um, the second piece of information you need is the signature. Um, so let me paste my digital signature here. Uh, and make sure you don't get that last slash right there. That's just an escape for the, uh, the quote. Let me paste the digital signature. Um, and the third piece of information is the message that we want to sign. Um, and in this case, it's the hash that represents the uh, signed document. And so let me grab the hash. And again, don't get that last slash. All right, I'm going to save this, and this is going to run the BitCore code. You can use any library. There's Bitcoin JS has a verification library as well. Let's see if it's verified. Oh, and you can see it's verified. So I just verified that this information is accurate for my ID. Um, we could do the same for Justin's ID. So if we go back to Blockstack, the Blockstein. We can click on Justin's digital signature here and it'll open up his own file. Um, and we can prove that it's him if we opened up this uh, profile.json, see if he has any attestations associated to his account. Um, but let's copy his hash, which it should be the same hash. Let's just double check that ZQ. Yep, ZQ and it is the same hash. Um, and this is the piece that's going to be different right here. His digital signature is different because it's unique to him. So let's grab that. And then his public key, his address. Save that. Clear this and verify so he's also verified so basically that's the whole digital notary piece of this is we were able to verify two people signed the dj contract without having to have an actual third party intermediary um, and that's all pretty visual in the web application here you don't have to go through the extra steps of verifying unless you want to um, and it's all visually displayed there and here's the document everything all right thank you hope everyone liked it see you next time